So the question that came in yesterday from, um, I, I, I promised I wouldn't name who they are for obvious kind of reasons, but I also know that this is true for a lot of different people who have ambitions to start their own business. What do you do? What do you need to consider? How do you make it work? And the questions in particular were, when launching from scratch, how do you get the first few customers, which I'm going to talk about? How do you convince them to take a chance on you, which I'm also going to talk about? And then likewise, relating to this, what are the things that you need to consider to kind of make it work? So I'm going to start that. Uh, so if you're going to launch a new business, and this is true for anything, if you make products or cameras or pens or consultancy or whichever, the most important thing is to really figure out what is it you actually want to do. Sounds stupid. What do you want? And the reason why it's really important is that a lot of people love the idea of going into business to do their own stuff, but they don't always think through the practicalities of actually how difficult it can be. So one of the things that we do on the course, and I'll talk it through, is on page 12, right at the start, four people that want to start their own business. Basically, there's 27 questions, which I think is really important for any aspiring entrepreneur to kind of, you know, consider and think about. And these even go down to what you want to do, why, why do you think you can do it better than anyone else? And, you know, all the way through to even working out your unit costs per t-shirt or course or coffee or whichever, even your like hourly rate. And then actually breaking that down through to, you know, are you doing it because you want to get rich? Because the chances are that might be a struggle. And just it's across the whole kind of 27 questions and the things that we ask for. It's all just to help you understand actually compared to say having a job, which is another option, which obviously everyone kind of has, is it worth it? And the reason why it's really important to ask those questions is purely because this is the real world that we live in, that if you just assume that everything will be rosy, you might be in for a shock. So it's just, it's really important to kind of do, and actually kind of, does it make sense? The next thing, which is also, where's my orange? Orange is over there. <laughs> I seem to like to use bright colors as opposed to reds and stuff, which clashes with my color scheme. And th there's lots of other things to consider. So what I'm going to do is throw it all on the board and then I'll kind of just talk through if that makes sense. So what you want to do, and that's page 12. And that's basically to ask yourself the 27 questions of, you know, what is it you want to do? Why? Why can you do it better than anyone else? How much would it cost to set up? Do you need premises? How much would your unit cost be? How much would you sell it for? Compared to your competitors, how much do they sell for? Why are you better? And basically it's almost as a, we do it on a double page spread in the book, but it's just, a, it's a really good exercise to look at. And the truth is that if you can't confidently say to yourself that you can do a business education course better than an existing competition, you know, or someone else, it's, why are you even doing it? And it's just, it's that kind of thing to ask kind of yourself. The next thing which is really important to do is think about the finances. So, so that's money and then just time. One of the things which I think everyone kind of gets, but it's, it's worth noting, is that when you start up on your own, you don't get paid, <laughs> which sounds silly to even say, but it's almost where if you don't go out and sell, you got no money coming in. And what essentially then happens is that you start with a certain amount of money, which is whatever you've got in your bank account and or what you choose to put on credit cards or stuff. But I wouldn't recommend that if you can get away with it. And basically over time, your money will drop. Um, and you know, that is the case of the time it takes from when you launch to actually getting your first customers, getting paid by those customers, having the money come in and balance it that most businesses for the first year will lose money. And the challenge is it's to mitigate the gradient of that loss so that you have as much time runway as you possibly can to make it a success. Because basically the way that most businesses work is that you will start and you'll launch and then you have your burn rate basically as you're using cash. And then at some point you start to get customers and you know, become profitable. And the idea is that you turn that corner before you go bust. Um, that can be as quick or as short as you wish. And again, it depends on your personal circumstances. 
but the one thing that I would really kind of look at I'm going to take this example because the chap that sent me the message is a, is a person you know it's not a business it's not an entity it's not a new uh, venture capital funded thing it's a person basically you want to get your cash in the bank uh, as big as possible before you launch basically that gives you more runway but the other one as well is you want to reduce your costs as much as possible to the point where <clears throat> if you don't want to give up not say give up but make compromises on the car and a few other things maybe on the lifestyle you're more than welcome to do that but you're going to drop a lot quicker and you're giving yourself you're making it a lot harder for the business to be successful uh, when I set up I had uh, two years worth of money in the bank uh, which I'd worked hard to kind of save up over time as I was kind of uh, you know going I didn't need that which is great but the point is I was prepared that if you have a rainy day or things take longer or there's extra costs or whatever you've kind of got you know you're prepared for that for me although I got my first customers quickly it, I didn't get to the point of really kind of genuinely turning that corner to grow probably for six to eight months and that's you know someone that does know what they're doing and you know was going through this process so that I would almost say for anyone always be prepared on that it's just it's, it's a really important thing that what I don't want to do is not say this people crash and burn they run out of money and then they just have to get a job again which is absolutely fine but it kind of kills the dream of launching the business that's you know it's something I really wanted to, to kind of talk about in terms of actually no, I'll stay on this page <clears throat> so one of the things you're looking at is that if you start from I'm going to draw a new timeline which is going to run from today through to when you launch the business and then as you grow the business so I'm going to go there is no axes ignore that there we go that's time and this is just today what we are on 11th of June and then say if you wanted to start a business I'm going to say 1st of January 22 so that gives you virtually six months before you actually want to you know quit your job uh, and actually kind of do it so when the question that came is how do you get customers to make a chance on you but there's a few things that I want to kind of you know just touch on as well so the first thing to do when you're looking to start a business is really define and understand what is it what is it that you want to do and you have to do that now that's straight away the next thing to do is start to look at your business strategy and actually look at how and why can you do this better than anyone else and basically you also need to do that now uh, I'll just put strategy so within the course and there's a reason why I've kind of designed it this way is that at the start of the course you know we have some basic kind of check sheets one of the the first modules is actually trying to look at your aims and ambitions because unless you know what is it what is it you're actually trying to achieve how and when we don't even know where we're aiming with all this so you kind of need to do that first and then we go through the different stuff but the strategy module start on basically module four and go all the way through but between the three strategy modules and say the marketing module which is where you're really looking to define your offer to the market what makes you special what makes you different to your competitors this is something that you need to actually get in place but long long before you kind of launch because the next thing you actually need to then do is do you want to get your website and branding sorted and you can do this in the background whilst you're working one of the things I'd always recommend is that on this graph that whilst you're I'm gonna grab another pen there we go I need a bigger office so whilst you're earning I'm going to assume that you are earning more than you spend because for me that makes sense so whilst you're earning you should be doing that and amassing cash that when you then look to start your own business at some point that stops and you start to go down but during that process what you can start to do and what I'd start to recommend is once you've defined what it is you then start to reach out to people people that you know that the question was how do you convince people to take a punt on you to almost <laughs> use you for your product or service and a lot of it will be tr trust it'll be people that you know it'll be friends and family it'll be people that already interact with you and your your network but the point is 
It's really important to start to ask people because what you need to do is sense check the viability of what you want to offer before you jump off a cliff. If you have a business that you want to launch that could be, I don't know, a new type of magical pen that does glitter, it could be anything. The point is if you have this dream to do something and you don't do any market research <clears throat> to actually test the viability of it, you might actually bet your life savings, quit your job, lose all security, and actually nobody's going to buy it. And then you just you're in you're in a world of kind of pain. This does happen. Uh, people have a dream to start whatever it is, and it doesn't work out. But the point is, I would ask people before you quit your job, and then likewise, if you then move forward, the person that got in touch, we actually wanted to talk about a service-based business, and it doesn't really matter what the service is. But again, when you then start to actually ask people about their businesses and things that they struggle with, I'm going to skip forward. And again, just demonstrating the stuff on the course is that actually when it's under sales qualifying, you have various questions. There we go. So page 134. It's things to ask your potential customers in terms of, and the reason is, Customers and the market and business, they don't care what you want to sell. They only care how you can help them. So the more you can understand about how you can help your audience, the better. And that is the whole essence of the whole business. But unless you get that right, you, you're wasting your time. But in terms of sales qualifying, it's asking your customer, um, well, there's 18 questions, so I won't go through them all. But it's basically, what is the problem you're looking to fix? What keeps you awake at night? What do you struggle with? As a business, what are your ambitions? What is preventing you from achieving those, et cetera? And what you're trying to do is find the pain point of the customer that you're then looking to um, service with your business. And what you're doing is you're asking the questions, not just telling them what you want them to buy or hoping. So you're going to ask people, but the important thing is questions. But the reason why it's really important to get your strategy and your comms in place first is that if you knock on the door for someone that you believe you know and trust and you know you think you've got a good shot at kind of making your, making your first customer you probably already know who these people are they're going to ask you okay so what is it what is it you want to do and if you can't answer that <clears throat> they're not going to take a punt on you they're not going to buy your stuff and it's really really important to do all of this before you quit your job in case what you're planning to do doesn't work. Because yes, after you launch and you jump off this cliff and your cash starts to go down, you will be able to pivot and you will be able to learn. You learn through asking questions, but as a recommendation, the more you can kind of do this in advance, it's just really, really important. Going back to the timeline, and I apologize, this is gonna get messy, but hopefully with the verbal descriptions, it'll be really important. On the question of, <clears throat> How do you convince people to take a punt on you? Why would someone use you and not someone else? Part of it is because if you've got your business strategy correct and you have a better offer than what's out in the market, that helps. But the other really crucial thing is all to do with your personal brand. This is what the world thinks about you, your credibility, are you seen as an authority or an expert on the topic? And actually, if people know, like, and trust you, they're a lot more likely to buy from you. And again, starting from today, but arguably starting five years ago. Personal. Your personal brand, can you see that? Yeah, just about, is one of the most important things for any business, any entrepreneur to kind of get right. I can see we're well over the 10 minutes now, so this won't be a LinkedIn video, but I'll clip it up and put it on YouTube. The importance of your brand and what people think about your business and who you are and what that is in the world will dictate if people buy from you and if they take a punt on you. In the course, we talk about the values. Actually, I'll show you. It's, it's always good just from a sales point of view. Anyone can promise stuff and they can even talk about stuff on a video. But actually, if you can demonstrate how you can gain this knowledge and that you've almost demonstrated in the past, it adds more credibility. So it's great, I love being able to reference back. So we start the course with some high level aims and goals. Then we go into breaking that down. Module two is actually to do with the skill sets and things that employers and business partners and clients look for in people who wanna do business. But that then rolls into module three, which is all about your personal and professional brand. 
And I do it in this order because likewise, for your entire business journey, if people don't basically like you, they don't understand what you do, etc. And that is all about your branding. That's why we cover it right at module three at the start of the course. That's how you get people to take a punt on you. And what you can do, because we all in theory have a personal brand. Some people put more effort into it than others, which is, which is fine, but it's still kind of true. That will follow your entire business career, even to the point if you're a Tesla and you're worth $100 billion. They have a brand, they have reputation, so that when they launch a new product, <clears throat> or Apple this week with the new updates to iOS 15 and that kind of thing. Because I know the business, I know the products, I have trust in the product, that is all their brand. That when they launch something new, which could be air tags or it could be whichever, I'm already kind of bought in. The point is for anyone looking to start their own business, your brand in many ways is everything. Because likewise, if you are a copywriter, they could hire you or they could hire John or they could hire Alex or they could hire Lizzie or whoever. And it's almost then how you need to create the environment to both have a fundamentally better business strategy to do with what makes you special compared to everyone else. And that can come down to your, your cash flow terms, your positioning, your service, your customer service, your what you offer, how you turn stuff around, how you communicate. And even like down to it, we spoke about last week, your execution can be the differentiator between your service and someone else's. So for instance, if you had someone else that runs an equivalent kind of business course, but they just do it from a webcam at home in the spare room with crappy lighting, and they don't give you a textbook or any good materials or whatever, they might be as good on the technical stuff, but their execution isn't as good. And that's again, when you start to do your planning and stuff, it's really important to kind of get your execution in place. And hopefully that kind of makes sense. I'm not quite finished just because there's a few other things that I want to talk about. But actually what we're trying to do is just help set the scene. But also because I know there's a lot of people who are looking at doing their own business. It's also really important to get this right because if you don't, <clears throat> for one, it can be very expensive. There's always often the fear of failure. If you try and launch something and it doesn't work out, what will people think? etc etc but actually the whole point of the roadmap is that you have support to help you get, do it you actually quite literally have a book to guide you through every kind of step but also you have these kind of q a sessions to help uh, along the process so i'm going to keep going this i said it was a big thing to answer and it is but i promise this is hopefully really good stuff that if someone watches this and yeah it takes 20 minutes of their time but actually it helps them launch a successful business as opposed to not. It's hopefully worth your time. Um, next, I'm gonna jump onto back on the blue and orange, the things to consider. So again, as most people on the course um, will probably start on their own, the things to consider when you're looking to get new clients. So you'll have um, your work week. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, if you are an entrepreneur, you are kind of doing stuff on Saturday and Sunday. If you're not, that's fine, but there will be people who do and you're gonna fall behind, but regardless, it's just one of the honest kind of truths of how people kind of sit. So if that's your general kind of work week, I'm gonna sim you know, simplify it for the sake of this. But if you're looking to bring in clients because you need to bring in money to make your business work, you need to sell your time. Your time is generally what most entrepreneurs like don't have. Or say when you start out, so I work with people, they might hire me for a day a week or two days a week or whatever. But essentially you might have client takes a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So you choose to sell 80% of your week to client stuff. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. The trick is always worth looking at. And this is just your Monday to Friday work week. Always keep time to work on your own business. So in this case, if you only want to work five days a week, you've kept 20% of your time, which is massively, massively important, <clears throat> to make sure that you can work on your own entity to help build momentum and inertia over time. I won't lie, and as my wife will attest, my mind is kind of on all the time. So actually, I kind of work seven days a week. I don't work full time eight hours a day or 10 hours a day, seven days a week. But I'm always doing stuff, which is just important to me. But the point is, if you don't um, make time for your own business or you choose to sell 100% of your time, the problem you have as an entrepreneur is that every business 
is like a flywheel. Um, so if you understand the concept of a flywheel, it's a, it's a mass that basically gets momentum. So as you spin it, it keeps going. With an entrepreneur, the whole point of a business is that you want to get your flywheel to a point where you get enough customers, enough momentum, enough followers, so that it keeps spinning on its own because you have to put a certain amount of effort in as the entrepreneur to make your business work to get that momentum. Where I think a lot of people go wrong in terms of freelancers is that if they sell 100% of their time, what they're doing is essentially running their own flywheel, but as soon as they get to the point where they stop, the business stops, and that's, it's not great because that's how when people set up their own business and they get trapped because they feel like they're working really, really hard, but they're not making progress. Or even if they're making money, the business isn't making progress to achieve its aims and goals because you're actually spending 100% of your time on client work. The trick of a really good entrepreneur is actually, show, I should have done blue. So you're the entrepreneur and actually I know I'm an engineer but you want to be able to put in a small amount of effort. So you're the entrepreneur, you put in the momentum to turn the bigger machine, which is then your business. So the bigger your business, the bigger your flywheel, but you never, you'll never get to this point where you can actually build a sustainable system unless you allocate time to work on your own stuff. And it's a really important thing that again, people fall into the trap with, that yes, if you go to the previous kind of page, there's a valley of death where you're just looking to be profitable. 100% in that case, work seven days a week just on client stuff just to get cash in to the point where you've you know, broke that curve to kind of keep growing. But when you get to a certain point, or for me, I'm kind of you know year and a half, two years in now for doing what I do, <clears throat> even though the roadmap is relatively new, the first kind of six to eight months I was doing this, I was just doing client work to earn enough money to invest back in stuff. But then actually with the creation of the course, and don't get me wrong, it was expensive to do and it's expensive to do all of this. The reason why I'm able to do it is because I have client work which pays my bills, but I allocate time of my week to make sure I do this and 9 a.m. on Fridays is a good example. But it was this whole um, flywheel kind of example was something I wanted to make sure that I almost communicated that the trap most people get into is just working hard. So this is work. And if you're working hard on a <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> if you're working hard on a flywheel on your business and you're not making progress, it's it's not great. You'll almost feel trapped in some ways. What you want to do is allocate this. This is your 20% of time to work on your own stuff, to build the machine, to build the mechanism to allow you to achieve your goal. So for me, that's when I allocate time for the classroom sessions, to write the version two of the book, to do these. And I might do some of this on weekends or evenings or whatever, but it's just, it's really important to kind of do. Um, I'm just looking at other things. I think I've covered that topic. I apologize, it took like 27 minutes to kind of go through, but I genuinely do think that for anyone that is doing their business or whichever, <clears throat> it's really important to kind of get this right. Look at your time scales and likewise, <clears throat> when you kind of launch, going back to the original questions, how do you get the first few customers? Make sure your strategy is correct. Make sure that what you want, to, what you want to offer is better than what else is out there and make sure that people kind of understand it. I would also ask people and qualify your potential buyers before you quit your job and make the jump, just because you want to make sure that you're on the right track. And then what you also might do if you ask the right questions is have your first customers kind of lined up before you jump, which is the great way to do it. On how do you convince people to take a punt on you? All about personal branding. Personal branding is so important. And you know, that is what you're about. That if people trust you and they like you and they see you as an authority or an expert on a topic, they'll buy into it. And that's how you do that. On the question of how much do you give away for free? This is interesting because it depends on your business model. So for instance, for me, I will draw a new graph. So the question is, how much to give away for? So depending on the type of business that you have, if you have a scalable product business, so for instance, 
you want to launch a new coffee shop that competes with Costa to bring in new customers on stuff. The challenge you've always got is trying to get enough users on it to talk about it and actually build that momentum that actually, you know, it takes time, if that makes sense. So in which case, if you have a product-based business or even what I do with the roadmap, you might actually give away quite a few for free because you're looking to build the momentum to the point where it takes over itself. So for instance, in terms of time and cost, in the question of giving stuff away for free, and this is as true, to be honest, even if you sell your time on stuff. When you first start out, so I'm going to say year zero, and then for me, I'm trying to build the roadmap on a 10-year time frame. I'm 16 weeks in, so actually I'm just going to map this out because it'll be interesting for me. So I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's a good guess. So out of interest, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven. So I'm building my business, hopefully, on a 10 year time scale. I'm now 16 weeks in, which is basically, arguably, a quarter of my first year. So actually, I am here. This is just actually really interesting to map out because I've never actually done this to this level. So if I'm here, I don't mind giving away time and effort and stuff for free because what I'm trying to do is get to the point where you break even and you get that momentum going where you have the inertia in your business to, as we said in the previous example, put a minimum amount of effort in. And like the, the cogs on a bicycle, you can generate a lot more benefit, but it's because I have the long-term goal. So for instance, you know, if I'm you know giving up free courses or whatever I choose to do, I can actually choose to do that for a few years should I wish. Or in the case of people who have paid to come on the course, really try and over deliver to give them consultancy and not have to pay £200 an hour to kind of do it. Because my time scales are there, but also the potential is there because it's a scalable business that in theory I could sell a million courses and it doesn't necessarily actually take a million times more effort, if that kind of makes sense. Um, as well, likewise, if it is just you and your business, um, you know, as in people power a service kind of business, it's a lot more difficult to give stuff away for free. But then again, that comes into how much cash you've got, what your burn rate is, and also part of your strategy to prove whilst you're better. So it's very difficult to kind of uh, explain, but I know I'll probably speak offline. Um, we're on 9.35. Uh, it's been actually quite quiet in the chat today, which has probably been actually quite good as a blessing to help me kind of bash through this because it is a more difficult one to do. But what I've tried to do is just you know give you an overview in sec, a half an hour, of really, really important things to consider to get right uh, when you're looking to launch. And then just in terms of the roadmap to actually help you do that, I do... Obviously, I'm quite proud of it, but it's almost where page by page, looking at even down to how do you negotiate deals or overcome buying wounds or even just demonstrate getting people to like you and be seen as an authority or an expert on a topic. It is really important for business owners, no matter what it is you do, that the, the, the basics are the same. And with the roadmap, we're really just trying to help you along that kind of journey. Um, so my name's Steve. Hopefully this was interesting. If it's not, no worries, because you probably won't have watched it. Uh, but I would love to kind of, you know, speak to you soon. Please feel free to send in any questions that you have. Um, so I've got my